So now we're going to have a look at converting from probability distribution functions to a probability table. So sometimes we're given a formula which explains the distribution of a probability within a given range. We can then convert this into a probability table by substituting the values of, for x into the equation. Or correct equation for that, uh, for that value and filling in the table. This can also help us to find unknown values, usually using the fact that the probabilities should add up to 1. So we've got two examples and then two now you try questions. So the first example is that the probability function of a discrete random variable x is given by p of x equals kx squared for x equals 1, 2, 3, where k is a positive constant. And we're asked to show that k is 1 over 14. So we're going to try and create a table using the values that we've been given. So on the top, we're going to have our x values and on the bottom, we're going to have our p of x values. So I can see from this that I'm only going to have 1, 2 and 3 as my x values. So when I put my first x value, 1, into this equation, I'm going to have k times 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is just 1. 1 times k just gives me k. For 2, I'm going to have k times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to have 4k. Whoops, sorry. That's meant to be a k. And then for 3, I'm going to have k times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, so that gives me 9k. And then as I said before, if we use the fact that these should add up to give me 1, so k plus 4k plus 9k equals 1. Well, in total here, I have 14k equals 1 and then dividing by the 14 means I've got k equals 1 over 14. So then if I have to find the probability of x being greater than or equal to 2, well if we think about this sensibly, the values that I have in my table that are greater than or equal to 2, I am just going to in red write the probabilities now using k is 1 over 14, so k is just 1 over 14. For 2, 4k is going to be 4 over 14. And for 3, 9k is going to be 9 over 14. So the values which are greater than or equal to 2 are 2, which has a probability of 4 over 14, and 3, which has a probability of 9 over 14. So the total probability for greater than or equal to 2 is going to be 4 over 14 plus 9 over 14, which gives me 13 over 14. Finally, for part C, we're looking at E of X, just as we did before. So we're going to have the X values times the probability of those X values. So 1 times 1 over 14 plus 2 times 4 over 14 plus 3 times 9 over 14. We need to put that into our calculator. So 1 times 1 over 14 Oops. plus 2 times 4 over 14 plus 3 times 9 over 14 and that gives us 18 over 7 or if you wanted to write it to three significant figures it gives me uh, 2.57 to three significant figures now for the second now you try we have a discrete random variable x 
has the probability uh, has the probability function p of x equals x a times 3 minus x for 0 1 and 2 however for 3 it's b and we're asked to complete the table below so for 0 i'm using the top formula so i'm going to have a times 3 minus 0 well, 3 minus 0 is just 3, so I'm going to have just 3a. For 1, I'm also using the top formula. So that's going to be a, lots of 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, times a gives me 2a. 2, I'm also using the top formula, which is a, lots of 3 minus 2 this time. 3 minus 2 gives me 1, so I'm going to have 1a, or just a. However, for 3, I now need to use the other equation, which in this case is just b. Sometimes you might have to substitute it in to get a different value, but here it is just b. So now we are given that e of x is 1.6, and we're asked to find the values of a and b. So we are going to use that fact that we've just been given, so the value of e of x. We're also going to use the fact that these are going to add up to 1. So we know that 3a plus 2a plus a plus b equals 1. And we can neaten this up a bit by uh, simplifying, so collecting like terms. 3a plus 2a plus a gives me 6a. I've still got my plus b and that equals 1. Remember that your E of X formula is going to be to do the X times the probability of X's and then add them together. And we know that that equals 1.6. So we know that 0 times 3A plus 1 times 2A plus 2 times A plus 3 times B that's just using the E of X formula, times in these together and adding them up, equals 1.6. And again, we can simplify that a little bit. That gives me nothing. 1 times 2A gives me 2A. 2 times A gives me 2A again. And then 3 times B gives me 3B. And I know that that's still 1.6. Neatening this, this up just a little bit more, 2a plus 2a gives me 4a plus 3b equals 1.6. So now, hopefully we notice these from GCSE, I have a set of simultaneous equations. Now we don't have to solve these by times in them and then subtracting them because in our calculator we have a function which answers this for us. So if we go back to the menu, if we go to equation and this time we go into simultaneous we can see f1 is simultaneous and then it asks us how many unknowns do we have well the two things that i don't know it's a and b so i have two unknowns and you can see at the top the form that you need to have them in so i need to have something times the first variable plus something else times the other variable equals some number and it just so happens that I have rearranged them into this order. So for the first one, and we just type in the coefficients, so the numbers before the, the letters. So the first coefficient is 6, because I have 6a, so it's just 6 that I put in. Then I have just a b, which means that the coefficient of that is 1. And that equals 1. Then I have 4a, so I just put in the 4, plus 3b, so I just put in the 3, equals 1.6, so I just put in the 1.6. And then when I click xe again, I have my two answers. Now it's important that you remember which one went in first. In both of those, my a was first, and that's what the x bit is there. So the value of a is 0 0.1, and the value of b is 0.4. Now we can double check this using our table. If I have 3 times a, so 3 times 0.1, that would give me 0.3. 
If I have 2a, so 2 times 0 0.1, that gives me 0 0.2. And if I have just a, that's 0 0.1. And then if I have just b, I have 0 0.4. And now we can double check, do they add up to give me 1? 0.3, add 0.2 is 0.5, add 0.1 is 0.6, add 0.4. Yes, that does add up to give me 1. So I'd like you to pause the video now and give the now you try a go. So hopefully by now you've given the first now you try question a go. So to start off with... Um, Remember that you're substituting in the different values of x. This one's quite simple. This dot, dot, dot means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It means from 1, 2 all the way up to 5. So in our table, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So at first, we're going to have 1 times k, which gives us k, 2 times k, which gives us 2k, and so on. So we end up with k, 2k, 3k, 4k, 5k. Remembering that they will all add up to give us 1, gives us k plus 2k plus 3k plus 4k plus 5k equals 1. Adding all those k's together gives us 15k equals 1. Dividing by the 15 it gives us k equals 1 over 15. And then you can see again underneath that I've just substituted in for k for the 1 over 15 and wrote the probabilities underneath. So then for part b x being less than 4, well, less than 4 means 3, 2, or 1. So then I added up those probabilities. So 3 over 15 plus 2 over 15 plus 1 over 15, which gives us 6 over 15, which can simplify to 2 over 5. And then for C, finding E of x, so times in the x values by the probability of the x values and adding them together. That gives us 1 times 1 over 15 plus 2 times 2 over 15 plus 3 times 3 over 15 plus 4 times 4 over 15 plus 5 times 5 over 15. And you can see there that I've typed it into my calculator and I've got 11 over 3 which is the same as 3.67 to 3 significant figures. So I hope that you pause the video now again and give the second now you try question a go. Again, be careful. This time there's two different equations to substitute into. So hopefully you've paused the video and given the now you try a go. Here you can see for 1, 2 and 3, we use the first formula, the kx. So that's 1 times k for 1, 2 times k for 2, 3 times k for 3. But then for 4, we're doing 4 plus 1, which gives us 5, times k. So we get 5k for 4. And then for 5, same one again, 5 plus 1 gives us 6. So that gives us 6k for 5. Again, using the fact that they add up to 1. So k plus 2k plus 3k plus 5k plus 6k equals 1. Adding all those k's together gives us 17k equals 1 and then dividing through by the 17 gives us 1 over 17 and again you can see underneath the table I've written down the probabilities then for b we're finding the exact value for e of x so actually we shouldn't write down the three significant figures one sorry uh, so doing 1 times 1 over 17 plus 2 times 2 over 17 plus 3 times 3 over 17 plus 4 times 5 over 17 plus 5 times 6 over 17. And that gives us 64 over 17. For the last part, we're having to try and show uh, that bar of x is 1.47. So we have to show our working. That's using e of x squared minus e of x all squared. So finding e of x squared, that means that this time we're doing 1 squared times 1 over 17, plus 2 squared times 2 over 17, plus 3 squared times 3 over 17, plus 4 squared times 5 over 17, plus 5 squared times 6 over 17, which gives us 266 over 17. Substituting that into the equation that I've written down there, so 266 over 17 minus all squared 64 divided by 17, gives us 426 divided by 289, as you can see there. And then when we change that to a decimal to three significant figures, we get 1.47. So hopefully now you can understand a little bit more about how to change from the probability functions into the probability tables.
Thank you very much for listening.